On page 607 of PICAL, you'll find this interesting molecule, DMCPA. And the DM stands for dimethoxy, and the CPA denotes that it's a cyclopropyl amine. And you can see this is a confirmationally restricted um, phenethylamine analog. And the fact that these carbons are tied up in a cyclopropyl ring means there are fewer confirmations this side chain can adopt, and there's a bit more steric bulk in this position. And you can say it's related to these two other analogues, 2CD and DOM. Uh, and in particular, um, compared to DOM, you essentially are just joining that methyl group up into a cyclopropyl ring. So these are probably the most closely related. And now in terms of the activities, DMCPA has an effective dose in man, according to the Shulgin scale, of about 20 milligrams, which is rated at plus three. Uh, which makes it actually more potent than the phenethylamine analogue 2CD by about twofold, and there are some error bars on these measurements, of course. Uh, and then DOM is still the strongest, coming in at 5 milligrams for the amphetamine analogue. So this compound tells us some interesting things about the requirements for the geometry of the molecule as it binds to the receptor. And so we're used to seeing phenethylamines being made via the nitrostyrene, but for various reasons, uh, the route reported in PECAL goes via a cinnamic acid like this, and you'll see why that's needed later on. And if you want to get pedantic about the nomenclature of the reaction, this is a Nervenagel condensation, and technically it's the Durbner modification of the Nervenagel uh, because it happens in the presence of pyridine and piperidine. And so what's happening is Firstly, you'll presumably get some sort of iminium adduct of the piperidine into the benzaldehyde here, and then that'll be attacked by the enolate of malonic acid to give you an intermediate here. And normally when we think about the Nervenagel condensation with something like diethyl malonate, you'd expect a, a diester product like this. Uh, but given that we're in the Durbner conditions, and presumably a lot of this carboxylate groups are uh, de in a deprotonated form, um, you'll get a concerted loss of carboxylate, and this will probably be protonated as it leaves, and it'll take you straight to the cinnamic acid product here with only a single carboxylate group. And the next step is the protection of the carboxylate moiety as the terbutyl ester. And you can't just boil up a carboxylate with terbutanol and expect to form the ester because we know terbutanol is far too sterically hindered because of all the methyl groups, so it won't actually form an ester and you need to make uh, the ester in a slightly different way. And so the solution here is to use isobutylene, uh, which is a gas at room temperature. And if you read the procedure in PECAL, this is a bit uh, operationally unusual in that it has to take place in a high pressure reaction vessel. You've got to condense the gas into a liquid form, which isn't too hard because it condenses at about uh, minus seven Celsius. And so you take your liquid isobutylene, uh, Shulgin adds in his solid uh, cinnamic acid with some sulfuric acid as the catalyst. And so of course, what's happening is this is generating tert-butyl cations, and carboxylates aren't normally the most nucleophilic things in the world, but the tert-butyl cation is sufficiently electrophilic that the carboxylate captures the cation, generates the tertiary butyl ester, and it's not a particularly fast reaction. This takes 48 hours, but it's a quite clean way to obtain the tertiary butyl ester. And then the next step in the sequence is what I think is the most interesting reaction. It's the corey tchaikovsky cyclopropanation, and this is what installs the cyclopropyl group on the side chain. And the reagent for this reaction is trimethyl sulfoxonium iodide. This is a commercially available salt. And we know that that positively charged sulfur can stabilize an adjacent negative charge. You can form an illid. And so this reagent here is treated uh, with a strong base like potassium terbutoxide, Oxide there. You can also use something like sodium hydride, and then that can deprotonate the reagent at this position to generate an anion here on the methyl group, and obviously all these methyl groups are equivalent, it doesn't matter which one you deprotonate. And then we can add into the double bond of the cinnamic ester and do a conjugate addition like this. Uh, but the interesting thing about this carbon here, which is the reacting centre, uh, is that it had nucleophilic character as an anion but it also bears a leaving group as this S plus here. And so rather than just protonating like a uh, normal Michael addition, what we actually get is the intramolecular process when the electrons come back down, they can attack the carbon that we just added into the double bond. And then the leaving group is just 
dimethyl sulfoxide, which is also the solvent of the reaction, so it's a quite clean reaction to do. Um, and then addition onto this carbon forms the cyclopropane ring. And uh, I haven't drawn the wedge or hash bonds here, but this makes the trans cyclopropane because it's the less sterically hindered product. I think you'd have to work quite hard to get the cis cyclopropane uh, here. So that doesn't form you get exclusively the trans product. Uh, and then after that, Shulgin mentions without too much detail that the ester was hydrolyzed. So presumably treatment of the terbutyl ester with some sort of acid uh, affords the carboxylate here. And then the final transformation is conversion of this carboxylate group into a, an amine via the Curtius rearrangement. I won't cover this in too much detail here because I talked about it in one of my mescaline videos, but briefly, uh, Shulgin makes the mixed anhydride by reacting the carboxylate with ethyl chloroformate uh, in acetone. Uh, and he uses acetone because this is miscible with the aqueous solution of sodium azide that he then adds azide comes in and uh, reacts to form this acyl azide here. The acyl azide is extracted and then with heating that rearranges to the isocyanate. Uh, he forms the isocyanate here and treats it with benzyl alcohol and we know this carbon here is very electrophilic so we can add in our alcohol into the carbon there and then we'll protonate at this nitrogen here to form the uh, benzyl carbamate here. This is just another way of writing NHCBZ. We normally think of this as a protecting group, uh, so it's quite a useful way. You can generate a protected um, amino group out of your courteous rearrangement if you want. Uh, it's not useful in this case because we just need to remove it, and so the standard way to do a debenzylation, hydrogen and palladium on carbon affords the free amine, and then as usual, um, Shulgin describes isolating this as the hydrochloride salt, recrystallizing it from ethanol ether, and that completes the synthesis of DMCPA. And so in conclusion, we've seen what I think is quite an interesting molecule, this phenethylamine analogue with a conformationally restricted cyclopropyl side chain. And we've seen how the Corey Tchaikovsky reaction was used to install the cyclopropyl group onto a Michael acceptor. So I hope you found it interesting.